Okay, hello and welcome to another video. And today I want to show something that I've been talking about for a while and that I've actually had kind of a hard time showing on the 1070. So I'm doing it on a 780 Ti now, which is a card that's uh, not nearly as bad with like um, GPU boost and like messing with your voltage as the card runs. Um, and yeah, so basically I want to show clock stretching today which is something that NVIDIA cards do um, to like hold a pseudo higher clock for longer. So basically, if your voltage dips a little bit below what the card needs to run, the card will just kind of like clock itself down for a little bit until the voltage goes up again to the level that it needs, and then it runs four clocks again. Obviously, that has limits. At some point, if your voltage just drops too low or you overclock too aggressively, the card's still going to crash. Um, but, um, a thing that you can show is like, uh, well, we have shown it with, uh, 980 TIs that if you give them extra voltage and run the exact same clocks, your score goes up. And that's kind of what I want to show today. So right here we have a 107, uh, not 1070, 780 Ti, uh, reference card, nothing special really. The important bit is that I've set a specific core voltage here. So 950 uh, millivolts, uh, actually behind the core, we're going to have like 929 millivolts, I think. Um, and I've set the core clock all the way down because, well, of course, it doesn't run stock clocks at this voltage. And we're going to keep the core clock the exact same. It should be 1,005 megahertz. Uh, we're going to keep that all the time, but I'm going to steadily keep increasing the voltage. And if the card does the kind of clock stretching that I want to show, we will see that our score are more like our time in uh, GPU Pi will get shorter because the card's getting faster, even though we're running the exact same clocks. So let's start by running. Uh, so you can see 1005 on the core. Um, and yeah, that's like 950, 956. Um, it might be fluctuating a little bit between batches, but um, this card doesn't really have yeah, it doesn't really have a, a GPU boost implemented in a way where it's like really, really messing with your voltage all the time. Um, this thing has a very basic version of GPU boost because you can see like our core clock is rock stable and that voltage fluctuation, well, the MS afterburner sensor isn't the best anyway. The MS, uh, yeah, so like this is card is on an NCP4206. Um, okay, 50, 50 point, let's put that down. So 950 is, fifty point eight three three. save that, and let's do one volt. And the exact same thing again. Yes, yeah, so what I've been meaning to say is the voltage setting that you do here. So this is an extended MSI mode, which you don't need an MSI card for. Um, it works on other cards as well. For the 700 series specifically on cards that have an NCP4206 or an NCP4208, provided that the I2C bus isn't locked. There's some cards like the 970 Amp Omega that do have that controller, but can't, you can't talk to because it's locked. On some cards, you also first have to unlock it, but on some cards, even when you try to unlock it, it, it doesn't work. Um, on this card, like on a reference 780 and 780 Ti, you can just set it to extended MSI mode though, and you will get this um, thing where it's not a voltage offset. You can just actually set a specific voltage that you want the card to run. Yes, it's doing it. Great. So we were still at 1005 core, but we were at a thousand millivolts, a one volt, and now calculating the one billionth digit of pi only took 46.547 uh, seconds. That's more than a four second increase. Okay, let's keep going. 1100. 1.1 1 .1 volts. Sincerely hope the VRM doesn't blow on this thing because you can set up to 1.3 volts in this. It's GPU pi, it should be fine. It doesn't pull that much power. You can see how the temperature doesn't really go anywhere. 
Like, yes, it is at full fan speed, but, like, the heatsink on this start card isn't all that great, actually. I'm really happy that it does the clock stretching thing, because 1070 was just not giving me any results that looked like it was doing anything. I think GPU boost kept messing with that card. And even though I set a specific voltage, I think it, it just kind of, without telling me, did what it wanted to. This one, though, has such a basic implementation, like it's such an old version of GPU boost that it is actually doing what I'm telling it to. Yeah, now it's just 40 seconds. This is cool. It's, it's actually working. Okay. 1200. The exact same core clocks. The exact same core clocks. All the time. You can also see how it gets a little bit hotter with every time we bump the voltage up. As long as it keeps the core clock steady, it's not gonna matter. Which is also nice. This one only like thermal throttles. It doesn't... Like it really only thermal throttles. Like if it goes to like 90 degrees or something, then it clocks down. It doesn't clock down between like 30 and 70 degrees, which is what the 10 series does. I don't know if the 900 series does it. 35 seconds. Two, six, three. Okay, let's just go for max. 1.3 volts. Even though that's like... I mean, I, I once tested it, he said 1.3 in this, you only get like 1.25 behind the core in a heavy test. In a lighter test like this one, wait, why is it all... Something's wrong with our core clock now. Now it's doing 1005 again. Okay, um, yeah, it's doing something weird right now. We will probably not be able to use this result. Maybe the voltage is a bit too high and it like messes with the boost states a bit. Yeah. Let's see if 1250 still gives us steady clocks. Uh, no, it's messing with the thing. Okay. Um. Yeah, because like the normal NVIDIA voltage register, I think, stops at 1.213 volts. And if you go over that, I think it messes with GPU boost and it starts doing weird things. Now it seems rather steady, but it was doing it in the beginning. Actually, I didn't pay attention if it was doing that before. I might have done that before. Thirty three point six. I mean, it's faster now, so I'll take that. So twelve fifty millivolts is thirty three point six four one. Okay, so it's got to clock right actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can't zoom in in Windows 7, right? <laughs> can't make this big, only works in Windows 10. Um, but yeah, so let's let's calculate how, how big of a difference that is. So we have... Wait, that doesn't work. Now we have a... Eh. Does that work? Well, I guess it does work. So it's a 51.1% difference. Exact same core clocks. 51% faster. Just because we gave it more voltage. That's clock stretching. So, I guess we have confirmed that 700 series does it. And I'm actually kind of shocked that it's that big of a difference. Like, 51%. Like... Damn. Well, that explains why it was scoring like a 680 in Fire Strike when I had it undervolted. Because, <laughs> like, I think usually this thing's supposed to do like 12,000 score on Fire Strike. It was giving me 8,000. 
So, yeah, that that's what I wanted to show. That's clock stretching. So, yeah, so NVIDIA cards do this little sneaky thing where when they get lower voltage than they want, they will actually reduce the core clock, which are, without telling you, like all the sensors kept showing 1005 and officially it was running at 1005. But every single time the voltage like dips a little bit lower than it needs to because of like a transient or something else, um, the card actually throttles its clock like very briefly for like maybe a couple clock cycles and, until the voltage dips up again. Um, and the lower your voltage is, well, the lower your voltage is going to go and, and like the more time the card spends at too low of a voltage. So the lower the voltage gets, the more the card clock stretches the more your score goes down. Um, yeah, so same core clocks we were at. Yeah, like basically like a thousand and five, like basically one gigahertz all the time. And just from increasing the voltage by 300 millivolts, we went from 51 seconds to 34 seconds. Which yeah is is is, is a fifty one point one percent difference. So this is actually a much better example of clock stretching than I hoped to get. And yeah, I'm quite happy that I was able to show this, uh, especially with a short video. So yeah, um, this is kind of what you have to keep in mind when overclocking Nvidia cards, especially the new ones, because like you know, like your twenty and thirty series. They run at like one volt. They run under, well, 30 series maxes out at 1.1 volts. And 10 and 20 series max are just under 1.1 volts. If they have enough power limit. If they don't, then they run at like one volt or maybe even below it. So that's why giving extra voltage to the cards is so important when overclocking. And that's probably also a reason why their power consumption just skyrockets so much when you give them an unlimited power level a uh, power limit because well yeah it's unlimited power limit now so it's no longer power throttling but because it's no longer power throttling there's more voltage going into the card and because there's more voltage going into the card the card has a higher effective clock which means that the card's doing more work and that pulls a lot more power too and generates a lot more heat it's the same concept with the 5800X3D where a lot of people were complaining that it runs so hot. Even though the cores are the exact same ones as in the normal 5800X, it just has more cache. But because it has so much more cache, the CPU can be fed with data much more efficiently, which means that the core, the, the effective core utilization is a lot higher because uh, um, like every CPU spends a lot of time actually just waiting for data from the RAM or the cache. And that's like why RAM overclocking and having a lot of cache is so important because the better, the more efficiently you can feed data to your CPU, the more of those clock cycles it can actually do, like do work with, like spend doing something. Otherwise, it's just going to sit idle, basically. And well, a CPU that sits idle at 5 gigahertz and a CPU that actually does something at 5 gigahertz is a very, very big difference. That's also why the 5800X uh, 3D runs so hot because it just uses a lot more of these clock cycles where the normal 5800X actually just sits idle for a while. Um, it's not the exact same with these graphics cards. Here it actually just lowers the clock, um, but it kind of results in the same thing happening. Um, so yeah, um, I don't really want to make this video any longer than it already is because, yeah. It says NVIDIA GPU clock stretching demonstration, and I think I've done a pretty good job of demonstrating it. So, yeah, I, I hope this helped you a little bit understanding a bit more about how NVIDIA GPU performance is affected by literally just voltage. And, yeah, I hope, I hope you learned something, and until next time, goodbye.